sometimes we have to stop trying to control everything. How does one do that? Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams, are a reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. I hope that you are doing well. How do you stop trying to control everything? That sounds a little difficult. We want what we want. We panic. We get nervous. We get anxious. We plan. And when things don't go the way we deemed they should go, we freak out. We watch others. They should do this. They should do that. I wish he stopped talking to me. I wish he would talk to me. Why is she doing that? Why are they doing that? I'm going to make sure my kid does everything perfect. I'm going to control who my son marries. She's not good enough. That guy is not good enough for my daughter. I'm going to control it. I am going to control every aspect of this new date I'm on. He is going to be the one for me. Oh, we're not a good match. Oh, he's going to be with me. I'm going to make him be with me. You break up with somebody. You call their phone 12,000 times. Oh, you going to talk to me. None of this works. You just making yourself upset. You are becoming more and more anxious trying to control things than letting it flow. This is one thing I preach about relationships. I'm not chasing no man down the street. I'm not getting nervous if I just meet a guy and we don't connect. Or I meet a guy and something happens. We didn't, uh, we didn't, we didn't exchange numbers. I'm freaking out. Trust and believe. I was with a guy from Haiti. I need to find out how many miles Haiti is from Chicago. If God allowed me to be with somebody all the way from Haiti, there is a high probability he's going to let me be with somebody else or him. Who knows? But I have to stop trying to control every damn thing. This is why I always talk about cancer. I'm telling you, getting sick like that, it really helped me. Now, I still deal with some control stuff and some anxiety, but it's much better. And I'm going to tell you all this. If I would do what I'm supposed to do, the anxiety that I do have at times would diminish. And there's one thing I preach to people, and that's meditation. When you meditate, you just let it go. It really is just, it's just, think about what you're doing. Now, when you're meditating, you're doing nothing. You're just sitting there. I do 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 5 minutes. You're sitting there for 5 minutes. You're sitting there for 10 minutes. You're sitting there for 20 minutes. And you're doing nothing. I'm not controlling who texting me. Well, I can't control that anyway. But I'm not controlling my phone. I'm not controlling paying a bill. I'm not controlling, man, I'm worrying about this for work. Worrying about this client. I'm not controlling Anything. I'm just sitting there in silence or sitting there doing a guided meditation and letting my thoughts take their course. Getting sick. I'm independent. I was 36 years old. Had my own place, of course. I moved out at 22, got married, got divorced by 29. I've been on my own since 22. Long time, 30 years. 30 year anniversary of being on my own. Um, And so... I'm, you know, independent woman. Yes, I am. I get sick. Memorial Day weekend. You have breast cancer. It's very aggressive. Blah, blah, blah. Mad. Pissed off. Pissed off. Why do I have to get cancer? Oh, you may not be able to have kids after all this chemo, though. I know y'all, shh, y'all, <laughs> pissed. I'm just angry for two weeks. Processed it. I want to live. I'm going to live. 
I trust God. I'm mad still. I'm disappointed, God. This ain't cool. But it'll be all right. It's going to be all right. All right. Get to the doctor. I have so many doctors, you all. Radiologist. Surgeon. Plastic surgeon. Oncologist. Primary doctor. I definitely had about five doctors. Northwestern Hospital. Top hospital in Chicago. Ah, doctor tells me, Tammy, this process is going to take 10 months. The what? Never been in a hospital day in my life besides the day I was born. So you telling me for 10 months, I got to be bothered with all this medical stuff. The radiation was every day for six weeks. Chemo, I had several rounds. Surgeries, I had two surgeries. So you trying to tell me I got to do all this and it's going to take 10 months? I don't think so. Well, I'm a visual learner. Some of us are auditorial, auditory, audible. We learn by hearing. And I'm a visual learner. I need to see it on paper. This is why I write so much. If you tell me something, if you could give me a graph or if I have a goal and I'll write it out. Or if I need to save a certain amount of money and I write it out on paper, divide it up. Visual learner. Visual learner. I got to read about it. That's me. So my doctor was so kind. He did a graph. Okay, this is this is your start. You're going to do this by month two. You're going to do this by month five. This is the do that ba boom. Okay. All right. You're trying to tell me for a year I got to do all this. My God, how am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to work? What in the world am I going to do? My mom was like, you need to come stay with me for a couple of weeks so I can help take care of you. Ugh. I don't like nobody taking care of me. Now, one thing I didn't want to be was sicky Tammy. Little sicky Tammy is 36 years old and she is sicky. Everybody's got to come see about her and fuss over her. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, but I got humbled that time. And I want you all to remember this. And I don't wish this on my worst enemy. I don't even have enemies. But um, it could happen to any of us. I don't want it to. Lord, please don't let it. But it could happen to any of us. And this is what we forget. Because we live in a selfish society. And when things are clicking, we forget that we could be the one in the sick bed. We could be the one that needs the caregiver. We could be the one with no food in our house. We could be the one that can't walk. We could be the one that needs assistance going to the bathroom. But we so arrogant and we so selfish and we so self-absorbed that we don't even pick up the phone and check on people. Because we're so arrogant and we, we forget that what Tammy went through, that could be me. I was 36. And besides breast cancer, a bill of health. No, wasn't thick and, thick and overweight like I am now. I know if you see me, I'm not like whatever. But I could stand to lose some weight, guys, for sure. For sure. No, it wasn't none of that back then. They said... Besides cancer, you could run a marathon. You were in tip-top shape. They say your heart is immaculate. So this is what I'm saying. You don't know what's going to happen to you. And um, I always say this, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I feel like God allowed cancer to happen to me to humble me. Not that I was a jerk. I'm not a jerk. I'm not that type of person. But I had got in my own way, you know, trying to control everything, controlling, making a mess of life for years. And by this point, when I got sick, I was in a way better place. Thank God. I believe he let that happen at that time because I had began the search of peace. But if I had gotten sick in 1999, 2000, 2001, my anxiety was so bad. I don't even know. You know, I don't even want to think about it. But this is why I have so much faith. You know, people, they get mad. Oh, they so religious. Or uh, I remember one lady, God knows I don't talk to her no more. One lady, I don't want to hear that God stuff. She was having a bad time, and I'm trying to encourage her. She, Well, she came to me. She said, what do you do? 
when things are bad. I said, well, I believe in God. I pray. I don't want to hear that God stuff. Well, you might as well jump off the phone. I got no- Hey, baby, I got nothing else to tell you because that's the only thing I could tell you is God stuff because that's what saved me. And at that point, I hadn't even had breast cancer or nothing. So don't come to me for my story. This is my story. And I tell you, God, faith, Jesus, the Lord, and you don't want to hear it, then you you might as well stop talking to me because that's all I got. I'm not going to make up something. <laughs> I got to be true. But um, I think I just messed up by doing that little rant. But anyway, uh, I'll try to pick up where I left off. God allowed that to happen to me, I feel like, to humble me because I had gotten to the point where I was trying to control the narrative and it was causing me great anxiety and it was causing me great depression. So let's fast forward to today. Some things I don't try to control no more. Now, relationship peace that one is a little difficult when my heart is involved. Now, I, again, the whole new dating, a new guy, I, that don't that don't even phase me. This is what I try to tell people, like, and this is from teenage years. This is not no new stuff. I'm trying to be arrogant. It's just not my thing, you know, like, new guy, whatever. It's all going to work out. I'm not even tripping or worried. Now, when I love, I love deep. Now, that's a whole nother story. Now, that's what, that's high anxiety right there. That's high anxiety. But um, even with that, I had to let go and still apply the breast cancer principle. You're going to get through this. And so when I got sick like that, check it out. What did happen? And to this day, I always signed up for short-term disability because you never know. I had signed up for short-term disability. I got a check every week. My rent was dirt cheap. This was when rent was like 700 bucks a month. Dirt cheap rent. Paid off car. Not a lot of debt. Got my disability check every week. Paid my rent. And I pretty much had, you know, money for my utilities and everything else. I was straight. I was able to be off and take care of myself. I remember sleeping from 1 to 1. I would go to bed at 1 a.m., wake up at 1 p.m. And, you know, my body was able to heal because after chemo, your white cells are low, which creates, you know, you're very tired and you're very susceptible to a cold illness. But if you sleep, it gives your body a chance to repair itself. And, you know, you're going to come back if God allows it. My um, dear friend, Miss Laura, her her dear friend had radiation recently. He's an author. He was ready to write his second book, but the radiation just, you know, zapped him. He's in his late sixties. He was like, I'm so tired. I'm not going to, I'm feel so bad. I can't write my second book. I told her to tell him and I know him too. That's why I gave this advice. You tell him that he just got to wait, you know, he's going to get to his second book, but with the radiation is making him tired. Give his body a chance to repair itself in a few weeks, maybe a couple months. He'll be able to write. And of course, he's feeling better now. He's getting back into his routine. Stop controlling the narrative. You can't. When it comes to the body. Oh, God. you Now, this one, you're talking about a miracle. People say they don't believe. <laughs> It's amazing how the body will repair itself. You break your arm, you break your leg, it heals. You have cancer, those cells repair itself. You have COVID and hopefully, prayerfully, your body heals and repairs itself. Your hair, you lose your hair like I did twice, bald. It comes back prettier than ever. Look at little kids, they lose their little teeth. They so cute, they so cute. Teeth come out. They come back big, big old teeth. You remember all those two big teeth you get? But it just shows you how God is like nature. He is nature. The grass is brown or gone. But hey, April and May, we're going to have some beautiful grass here in Illinois. And the trees I have over here by my house in Downers Grove. Oh, my God. We might have the prettiest trees in Illinois. 
gorgeous. The colors in my sister's um, the back of their house, purple, vibrant. Now, now it's bald back there, but wait till April and May. They're gonna be so pretty. But we gotta give it time. Nature shows us what's gonna happen in our life. Stop trying to control everything. And this is what I said yesterday about myself. I was having a problem at work. And guess what I said out loud? I said, Tammy always wins. I said, girl, this going to be okay. Now, nothing like with management, nothing like that. Just dealing with students. <laughs> I said, Tammy always win. Because I'm going to always win. Because guess what? I'm not going to be able to per se control these kids. I, I'm in control of my classroom. I can run my session the way my job has taught me. And after that, you take the size nine shoe, hit that gas pedal, and drive down the street and smile. Because that I can control. I can control my truck. I can control my, my life within reason. I can control my legs driving me home. But I cannot control some kids. <laughs> Do what you can do for you. Control the parts you can't control. And the rest is going to all fall in place. When you make that peach cobbler, which is my favorite dessert, and I really don't know how to make one. I never made one. I'm sure I could. When you put that um, those ingredients in that, you know, that glass container, the glass pan, or the whatever pan you use, you drop in the peaches and the cinnamon and whatever. Oh, that's such a good dish. And you crisscross that dough. It don't look like it's done, does it? But once you put it in that oven and it cooks, you pull it out. It's all done and, and it all came together. So life is like a peach cobbler. <laughs> hey, that's a great comparison. I'm telling you, my mouth watering right now. I love good peach cobbler. It's going to all come together, but you're only going to be able to control so much of it. But sitting up there, doing manipulation, you want to really mess up something, go manipulate a situation and, and see how how miserable you really be after you get it. I know people that have manipulated marrying somebody. I don't know how they do that, though. That's really pretty cool that they do that. I, I mean, I'm not sure how. Is it really cool? And now, to this day, they don't even want that person no more. Because sometimes when you want something so bad, and you do these crazy things to get it, you'll see it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Somebody might swindle up their way, do a PPP fraudulent thing, and then you end up in jail. So was that worth that? Or cheat on your taxes real bad? And end up on the IRS so much money. Was that worth that? Manipulation. Controlling things. What do they say? If you do something you love. It's not going to feel like work. I remember um, starting to. You know. Working at the practice. 2018. Three, four clients. I don't even remember if I was upset over not having any clients. I don't think I cared. I always had a job. Full time job. 2019, five clients. Now, I always tell you all 13 clients a week as a part-time therapist. Too much. Too much. And I, again, I try to talk to people. They come to me. How many clients should I have a week part-time? Don't go over 10 to 12. They say full-time is 20, 24. So if you're doing 13, 14, and you just start, you're, you're going to be overwhelmed. But no, people don't listen to me. They be thinking, I don't know. Not that I know it all, but I do know about that because it's very stressful. If you, I don't have kids. These people come to me, they have kids. You have kids. You have a full-time job. You already have 12 clients or more. You got to do those therapy notes. You have to do treatment plans. I give out homework. It's a lot. You're going to be overwhelmed. Stop chasing money. That money going to come. That's why I was going with that. 2018, 2019, nothing. I barely was making money. 2020, COVID hit. I've been busy ever since March 2020. 
I, you know, I'm turning people away now. I, I'm, I really got to be diligent with my follow up with um, inquiries because that's how many people I get now. It's a, it's busy. Mental health clinicians and professionals, we are, we are overwhelmed. Like how the doctors and nurses were with COVID, now it's us because guess what? We trying to put back together the mental health of people from COVID, breakups, people breaking up left and right. I'm talking to them right now. Our students just regulated lazy, some of them, because they got past when COVID hit 2020. They just passed some of those kids. They missed a whole year of learning and they, they are very thrown off, very dysregulated. People were dysregulated. People still isolating over that. They're not going to people's house the way they did. I do actually, I do a lot of Instacart shopping. I don't even go in person as much as I used to. Not really over COVID though. Sometimes my schedule is just hectic and it's just easier for me to do that. But it changed things, you know, it's a weird time. It really is. So have to be diligent with your mental health. You have to take your hands off the wheel and let life come to you. This is how I learned how to play tennis so well. Oh, it was hilarious when I first started. Me and Eddie out there on that court, he could play real good. He was trying to be nice. This poor girl, I had just got a finish with my cancer treatments, and I, I'm just not in great shape. And I'm hitting the ball with all my might. And now we're at a tennis court. A lot of tennis courts have a high fence. Oh, I'm hitting the ball over the fence. High. Because I didn't know how to control it. Bam. First of all, a tennis ball is very light. You don't even need to do that. But I didn't know. I never really played tennis. And the next year, I didn't do that no more. You know, by that time, I had ball control. We played like 10 summers in a row, 2008 to 2018. So, um, yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? So, by what, the, the third summer, second summer, third summer, I'm like, hold on. When the ball drop, you hit it. Stop trying to do all this crazy stuff. Just let the ball come to you. And that's how I became a good tennis player. Let the ball come to you. Let life come to you. Stop trying to control everything. Stop freaking out. And please stop being negative. That's not going to work out. That's not going to work out. That's not going to work out. Well, why you? If you think it's not going to work out, why are you doing it? Isn't, I'm not going to send out a resume if I don't think I'm getting a job. <laughs> I'm not going to go on a date if I don't think I'm going to get remarried. I'm not. I'm not going to call a potential client if I don't think they're going to book with me. Think about what you're doing. Always expect the best. Let it go. And just know you're going to win. Like I said yesterday, Tammy, I always win. All right, you all. I hope this helps. I know it's a little longer, but I just want to help you to stop controlling everything. Let it go. Do your best. Show up as your best. When you show up as your best, life will give you the best back. Trust me, it will. It will. It will. All righty, Tammy C. Walker. Hit that like button for me. Please subscribe to my channel and have a good day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.